Yuki-chan, it's so nice to see you. Well then, if you'll excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry that I couldn't help more. It's all right. You've given me plenty to think about. Thank you. What's up with him? Weirdo. Huh? Never seen him before. Ah, I had a feeling you'd come. You're... Are you here to ingratiate yourself with Risei Kujikawa now? Jeez, why did the clerk even let them charge it to someone else? Huh? Wait, you're that guy we saw with Kanji. Precisely. I don't believe we've met since then. In fact, I don't believe I've ever introduced myself. My name is Naoto Shiragane. I'm investigating the multiple murders that have occurred here. Mind if I ask you a few questions on the subject? The latest victim, Kinshiro Muraoka. He was a teacher at the school you all attend, correct? So what? The public is focused on the fact that he is associated with the second victim's school. But in truth, that's irrelevant. What intrigues me is the inconsistency. This Moraoka has never appeared on television. What do you make of that? How are we supposed to know? Well, we'll leave it at that. For my part, I'd like to solve this case as quickly as possible. I'll be keeping an eye on you all. Well then, until we meet again. Who is that? It felt like he completely saw through us. He even knew about the TV thing. <laughs> Me! I am the king! Actually, the queen. You didn't even draw a chopstick! Alright then, let's have someone talk about something really embarrassing that they'd never want to tell anyone. Hmm, let's see. Oh, Naoto-kun, I choose you! She's breaking all the rules. Just ignore her, Naoto. No. No, that won't be necessary. One stipulation, though. If I do this, the rest of you must reveal something as well. Okay! No particularly embarrassing experiences come to mind. Would discussing my life be fair game? It's the rare situation like this that gives me call to speak of such things. Damn, way to kill the mood. The Shiragane family has been detectives for generations now. We lend our powers to the police from time to time. For generations? Wow, it's like that guy from a movie I watched before. What was his name? Kuzu... Noha? In days gone by when there were no crime scene investigators, consulting detectives were considered more valuable. Thus, my grandfather still has a strong connection with the police, and looks after me, despite my youth and inexperience. But investigators nowadays are well-versed in science and medicine, so I must further my studies. That sounds tough. Uh, that's it? No punchline? <sighs> I fear you may be looking to the wrong person for that. Embarrassing! Isn't Naotokun embarrassing? I want to go home. Oof, I'm sleepy. Well then, it's your turn now. Straight answer, please. What is your true involvement with the murder case? You know, you're so good at killing the mood that it's almost funny. Well... We go rescuing people who've been kidnapped by jumping into the TV. And then we do stuff like Persona with our personas and beat the crap out of shadows. You idiot! <sighs> Are you making fun of me? It's true! Persona! <laughs> Gee, someone put these two drunks to bed already. 
I see now that you had no intention of telling me the truth. But I'm curious, how did you become so inebriated? This isn't alcohol. Good one, Naoto! No, I confirmed it when I first entered. No alcohol has been served here since a rash of drunk driving last year. Huh? Does that mean we're all just drunk off the atmosphere? Who cares? <laughs> I feel so good. Good night! Hey, senpai! How the hell are we gonna get back with two passed out drunks? All well, this is giving me... Teddy's still totally okay! <laughs> Let's keep drinking till morning! Bring it on. As I said, you haven't been drinking alcohol. Are you a pack of imbeciles? Hmm. I apologize. Shall we go home now?
Oh. Thank you. I'll see you again. Senpai. Hello. Hmm. <sighs> that isn't it.
I'll see you again. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! I see. Yes. You have my gratitude. Yes. <laughs> I'll see you again.
I'll see you again. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you. I'll see you again.
Senpai! I am Yakushiji, secretary of the Shirogane estate. I humbly apologize for the other day. I must also apologize. Though I may not have known, I involved you in this. It was an act put on by my grandpa. My master has been terribly saddened by Naoto-sama's state of affairs lately. Lacking acquaintances to confide in, she devotes every fiber of her being to work. My master wanted Naoto-sama to regain the joy she felt in days past. To regain the feelings when all that she wanted was to be a detective, regardless of her heritage or gender. <sighs> I involved you at my own discretion, believing you to be trustworthy. Please forgive me. I received this from Yakushiji-san. It's the final challenge. A place I'd be fond of. You remembered. The highest place around here is... The hill. Next, what I can't stand to do. There are several possibilities, but... That's right! Did I mention that before? Considering what's at the hill, the most likely answer is the trash can. I have an inkling of what might be there. Let's go, senpai. this thing even existed. It's the last of the seven tools. The detective's pocketbook. <sighs> All the things I had forgotten about are packed in here. 
I think Grandpa wanted to remind me of them. This childish game. He's selfish indeed. Forcing me to recall all this now. I was trying so hard. Not to be underestimated. Not to be condescended to. <sighs> if I solve this town's murder case, then everyone would accept me. They would acknowledge me as the fifth in the Shiragane lineage of detectives. That's what I told myself. I just wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be needed. That's why I fretted and stood on my tiptoes and focused only on solving the case. But the original reason I wanted to become a detective, it was because mysteries intrigued me and I could help people by solving them. That's all. I remember now. Do you recall the time I faced myself in the TV world? It was my task to accept the self who yelled, I want a reason for me to stay. But my reason to stay was not solely to solve the crime. You, everyone, gave me a reason. You gave me a place to stay. I have to be an adult. I have to be a man. With that way of thinking, I was running for myself. I don't need to look for something to change or something to accomplish. I only need to have faith in myself. I finally think I can accept myself. That I'm a woman. That I haven't yet become the detective I wanted to be. I... I am a woman, and a detective, one who is seeking the truth with you and the others. When I'm with you, I become scared. Afraid that the instant I admit the truth, everything will spill out. <sighs> but I need to say it. My true feelings. I love you. Uh, anyway, that seems to be the truth. <sighs> I'm so embarrassed. I feel like I could die. I see. So this is where you live. I can see furnishings here and there that don't match your tastes. These are temporary lodgings, of course. Judging by the position of your TV, you regularly watch the Midnight Channel from... Well, of course. This is your room. Oh, uh, well... Anyway, I'm sorry for intruding like this. I, I wanted to give you something. I uh, made this. Please accept it. I haven't crafted anything like this in some time. If I went back to the estate, I could have added a camera and transceiver. Oh, but it flashes. I made myself one to match. <sighs> Don't laugh, or say it's stupid or childish, okay? The title of detective became a burden to me. I thought I had no other aspects apart from detective self. But you gave me a reason to be, as neither adult nor man. 
Senpai, being with you, I felt I was glad to be a detective. And... Do you find the pitch of my voice strange? I... I see. Um... Uh, I'll try. How's this? <sighs> it's rather embarrassing. But I never thought I'd get used to sounding like that. People change, I suppose. I think I'll grow to like myself. considering the things that I should have, the people who care about me as well as my own self. The detective, the child, the woman, the me who existed before them. I am simply myself. I'm glad to have met you. Quite close. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how to put it. The puzzle of my emotions has been solved already. But <sighs> I love you. Pretty cold outside. Uh, well, um, I'm sorry. I guess I'm nervous because, um, we're the only ones here. That's a wonderful cake. It makes me feel like a kid again. Um, I have something for you. I was late because I had to go back home to get it before I came here. customize this watch. It has the normal functions of a digital watch, but it can also tell you where I am. It's just a toy though, so it only has a radius of a few meters. And just so you know, my watch has a similar function. <laughs> my watch can tell me where you are. Really? I'm glad. Although, from spring on, my watch will just say, out of range. Until then, I want to be with you as much as possible. Uh, I 
have something to show you. I... Um, I... I want you to see me in a school uniform. Uh, you said you liked it when I spoke with a higher voice. So I figured I should look more like a girl. Be besides, my normal clothes go against the school dress code. Let me go change. Yakushiji-san prepared it for me. I know this is what all the girls wear, but, um, isn't the skirt too short? Please stop. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> I, I think I'll stick with my normal outfit. I'd feel awkward all day if I wore it to school. <laughs> but I'm happy that I showed it to you. <laughs> huh? Ah, uh, you want me here tonight? <laughs> I can probably come up with some kind of alibi for where I spend the night. I apologize for making you wait. Uh, uh, um, could it be that I don't meet your expectations? Why would you say something like that out of the blue? You love saying embarrassing things like that, don't you? Sheesh. We should pay our respects at the shrine now. Let's go. What did you wish for? I made a wish regarding the same subject. I wished about the time we spend together. May both of us be able to spend a full life this year as well. Of course, I wish that we would do so together. Should we draw Omikuji? I usually have bad luck when it comes to things like fortunes, though. Could this mean that we may get into fights? I see. I should be careful, too, then. Well, that may mean that we'll become so close that we'll be honestly speaking our minds to each other. Mine says... Ouch. Curse. Let's see. The romance fortune says... For things to continue harmoniously, you must discard your secrets. <laughs> I see. This is quite accurate. But I'm not keeping any secrets from you. Well, besides the ones that are unimportant and embarrassing. And since I got curse, that means that my fortune won't get any worse, and on the contrary, it can only go up from here. Um, now that we're done here, would you like to come over to my place for once? I actually bought a kotatsu. It's, uh, nice and warm.
Happy New Year. This place is covered in snow, too. It's chilly, but I like the winter and its tranquility. Things have become so peaceful lately. I finally feel like I've gotten used to it. The people of Inabar are thinking about the events that transpired and are making an effort to make the town better. I've heard that a lot of local government projects are being considered, such as bringing back old festivals. It would seem that they're trying to revitalize the town commercially, but I think the people yearn for connection. But as time passes, everything fades away eventually. Whenever I handle a serious case, I always come across a certain problem. Man can forget about painful memories, and in doing so, wipe away tears and learn to stand up again. But because we forget, we repeat the same mistake that caused those bad memories in the first place. Being able to get used to difficulty is a strength, but people make mistakes because they get set in their ways. But after meeting you, I feel as if I've found an answer to these doubts. I feel that as long as you can find something precious in your heart, something to protect, you'll be okay. And as long as you have that precious someone, no matter how much you forget, you can strive for a better future. Of course, I have people who are precious to me as well. That's why I'm thinking about doing whatever I can for them too. This isn't just about me. I draw my strength from everyone else. They keep me alive. I've never considered things like that before. And of course, the ones who taught me to think that way are none other than you and all my other friends. Thank you. Really. There's a new power budding in my heart? I wonder if this means that I'm still capable of change. I'm going to keep learning from here on, and as long as I do, I can always change. That doesn't just apply to me. I'm sure the same can be said about you, too. Love is frightening. It often brings out a part of me that I wasn't aware of. But no matter how I may be, you will accept me as long as I'm not deceiving myself. And in turn, I want to stay true to myself so that you will continue to love me. Oh, I'm sorry, you just surprised me. Um. <laughs> I'm the one who brought it up, but now I suddenly feel embarrassed. I... I... love you too. Forever. My legs are more tired than I thought. I thought I'd have learned to not fall down anymore, but I must be tensing my legs too much. 
I'm sorry, you must hate having a total beginner holding you back like this. I've always been able to pick up new skills when they become necessary, but I've never had to ski before. Murder mysteries may take place in snowy mountain retreats and novels, but it's not that often in real life. Cutting a telephone line in a mountain cottage during a blizzard is obviously suicidal too. I wonder how long it's been since I last tried so hard to just have fun. I used to think that these frivolities were a waste of time, that they wouldn't make me any better of a person. <laughs> Though thinking back on it, I have to laugh. I was all alone then. I want to come back here again. That's fine. I'm sure it would, um, increase the efficiency of practice. Mmm. No, I wouldn't be able to focus on practicing at all. Shall we start heading back? The snow's starting to fall quite heavily. Which way should we be headed to get back to the lodge? Oh, well... I thought I was simply following you today, so I wasn't checking on our course. You don't sound very confident. But then again, I'm sure we'll get somewhere as long as we stick to the ski course. We should leave soon then. I can't go very fast, after all. Um, is this really the right way? It's not that I don't believe you, but I feel that we've already been past this area. Could it be that we're lost? I don't want to admit it, though. This is a problem. The snow could be concealing small rivers or cliffs beneath us. I don't think... We should be walking around aimlessly. Actually, I'm reaching my limits. <sighs> That's impossible. The snow's too soft. It needs to at least set for a night. Isn't that a cottage? Thank goodness. Even if that place is empty, there should be things there. We may be able to get ourselves warm. Let's go check it out. Excuse me, is anyone here? Hmm. It was unlocked. I wonder why, though. Some places don't use padlocks because they've been known to freeze shut in extreme conditions. Let's just consider ourselves lucky for now. About it not being locked? True, that does sometimes lead to crime or assaults. But we should be alright. I don't suspect anyone is here. If there was, it would be warmer in here. Um, do you happen to have your cell phone? I tried making numerous calls while we were lost, 
and my phone's battery has run out. This is a problem. Could all the snow be disrupting the signal? The blizzard isn't calming down either. I doubt it will last long, considering the weather here in the mountains. But this still isn't good. We may be indoors, but the cold is a very real threat. <sighs> b by the way, um... Warming each other with our bodies would be ineffective in our case. That only works when your clothes are wet, or one person's body temperature has been significantly lowered. Uh... Right. No one asked for details. Sorry. But on a more serious note, we do need to find a way to warm ourselves, or we'll be in trouble. Upon closer inspection, this sunken hearth uses charcoal and not firewood. Thank goodness. If we can get some ventilation in this room, we'll be able to use this. Now we need something to start a fire, but a place like this should have some tools available. Seems we won't have to worry for the time being. Ah, Prometheus. Thank you for fire. This is, well, a more effective way to get warm. We can't let any last bit of heat go to waste, after all. <laughs> Where could we be? I thought that we'd been walking towards the lodge. Even once the blizzard settles, it's risky to walk around in the mountains at night. It seems we have no choice but to stay here. Mm. Strange. We're in quite a pinch, but some part of me is actually enjoying this. All alone with another, stuck in a mountain cottage for an entire night. <laughs> Yikes. I think this feeling is referred to as the suspension bridge effect. Senpai? <laughs> That... turned on right now, correct? Why? Yes. I can't pretend it didn't happen. Whoa, Senpai? What are you doing? That... You should stop doing that. I... I mean... This is hardly an ideal location to be trying this. Stop! Before you go too deep! What are you guys doing? This isn't that kind of mystery, Detective Prince! Stop! It's just an incredibly romantic situation up on a ski trip! Don't give in! Everyone! They're still dressed. Why would they take off their clothes in this freezing weather? And dude, why are you guys so flustered? What is up with you guys? Are you really asking that, Kanji-kun? Now, John, were you waiting for an audience? Ha! How shameless. You don't have to prove yourself to anyone. But okay, I'll take a front row seat and... I, I'm having a hard time understanding what you're trying to get at. You came to rescue us, correct? Actually, since when were you all outside? Don't tell me you've been here the entire time. No, I mean, not on purpose. It would have been awkward to interrupt before, but... So, you're saying that you were spying on us. Hey, we came because we were worried about you. More to the point, what are the two of you doing in here? We needed to examine this TV here in greater detail. The 
TV? Why? It's not plugged in. Come on, guys. Don't try that lame excuse on us. That is not an excuse. It's the truth. Senpai attempted to go inside the television and... Why are you looking at me like that? So you got lost, found this building, and then things started heating up. You obviously aren't listening to what we're trying to tell you. The TV turned itself on even though it isn't plugged in. Since the Midnight Channel is no more, we need to investigate. There's no way we'd risk ourselves to come to this stupid little shack just out of some impure motives. But this building is right behind the lodge, though. We were told that it's a storage shed. They don't lock it because workers come here often during the day. And it's not like there's a blizzard or anything. Maybe you just saw a reflection from the ski lights or something. That's impossible. Then again, I don't think Naoto-kun would lie about something like this. And since we're all here, we might as well check out this TV. Hey, wait a sec. Oh, but maybe I should have kept it the way it was. Still, I made it with you in mind. Please accept it. And, um, well, if you could... Oh, of course. I guess I did an okay job. I mean, what did I expect? I made it exactly the way the book said to. I started out wanting to make something that reflected how I really felt, but I couldn't think of anything. I'm with you, I start to lose sight of the identity I've created for myself. I'm blurring, becoming something new. I want to be happy with who I am, but I want you to be happy with who I am too. And then I start wondering if I'm changing myself for my benefit or if I'm doing it for your approval and what that means about me. I think... I want you to help me figure out who I really want to be. Because I know that if you're happy with who I am, then I don't need anyone else's approval but my own. Yes. I don't know what to say. I'm so happy to have you with me. I'm so immature. I hate it. This is the first time I've been in love. So matters of the heart are still... difficult for me. But... You've always got me figured out. You're a master detective. Or a spy. It's not fair, stealing just my heart. If you're going to take part of me, take all of me.
apologize. <laughs>